Oh, it says now I can, it says you can receive guest services. Maybe that's not what it said. Do you think that's what it said? What are guest services? I don't think that's all the stuff that happens at the top. Crew Fest, TikTok Winter Live Games. I don't know what any of that means. Are y'all playing the TikTok Winter Live Games? I am not. Mm -mm. Oh, and we're we're notifying viewers that you're live and viewers. Is that what I have to have viewers? And I was like viewers, but they're viewers. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we've lived through the winter of Texas. It was 18 degrees the other day. Now it's back to some normal temperature. Like, I don't know what, like 50 something. Yes, the humans. <gasps> Thank you. It's a new jacket. I don't, can't believe you know. <laughs> it's so surprising that I'd have a new jacket, isn't it? So you guys put it in the chat where you guys are from and if you're snowed in. Of course, I think if it's 60 degrees, that's like being snowed in. It was, it was terribly cold. Um, but not too cold to shop. Did you guys all have a good Christmas? Did you eat too many carbohydrates? There she is, our favorite, Angie. Ba 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 Beaumont. I just drove by you today. I would have stopped, but it was too early and Talbot's was not open till 10. I was like, what the hell, kitty, okay, are you talking about? <laughs> oh, no, I'm putting it in. No, no, no. No, no, no. Okay, let's hear the questions. <gasps> San Diego, <laughs> it's 80 degrees. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So the first one I see says, how do you get gen ed teachers to include self-contained SPED students in their classrooms? So we have to always remember that every kid is a general ed kid, that every kid in the building is a general ed kid. Literally, even for a child that goes from PPCD or um, ECSE and is always in self-contained or highly supported setting. Um, and unfortunately, I don't really make that the teacher's fault. That's the principal's fault, right? Um, and so uh, the principal is the one that schedules everybody a homeroom teacher or general ed teacher. So the principal needs to bridge that gap. Uh, but if you're the parent, I would reach out to the principal and say, what day will Jing begin? Okay. And how do you ask for testing for your student? Sure. So this is my formal request for Billy to have special education testing. Eight areas are speech and language to include pragmatic, medical, physical, sociological, um, IQ with all seven Gs, formal achievement, adaptive behavior, emotional behavior or psychological, and then whatever related and or structural services and, uh, would be appropriate for him. Now, if it's just a read, a reevaluation, then we ask for uh, the areas that we need new testing. Okay, and then for Texas, how do we get the school to recognize diagnosed dysgraphia? So the truth is, my love, I haven't found any state, any state that does anything about dysgraphia. They don't. All the disses. Services, will they lose their IEP or modifications? We get discharged from a hospital. Um, so um, if there's a related service or an instructional service or a special education service that a student no longer needs, the way they got it is the same way they ungot it. So if you tested and met eligibility for physical therapy as an educational need, then even if we're all in agreement, I'm going to retest to make sure that their uh, physical therapy needs are in the normed range, right? So we met eligibility for a related service or instructional service because their area was not in the normed range. So I want to make sure that you get out the same way you got in. Okay, and how do you help a student who struggles to write, but the school says that they know or it says, but the school says that they know about the issue. So I guess this is a teacher wanting to help her student. Sure. So that's really good. So I was in another state the other day. I don't know what other state it was. There's a lot of other states besides Texas. And um, I didn't lie. I embellished. It's called advocating. And so I just pulled up. I think I was in Minnesota. And the kiddo is a third grader. And he writes like I write. Like you can't even read his handwriting. It's like hieroglyphics, right? And what do teachers say? And God bless teachers. It's okay. I can read it. Well, I can't, right? So I went online and pulled up Minnesota third grade writing, and it gives you samples of average, what average third graders write, right? They write five paragraphs with the beginning, middle, and end, um, three to five sentences. And then I screen shared that, and I said, well, here is your state's normed range for third graders, and then there's his. So whatever state you're in, they have samples of um, writing. They have samples of whatever kiddos in that average range. So use your own state's samples to compare and see if there's a need. 
Okay. And then another question. Can you explain LRE in slight depth? In slight what? Slight depth. So not super in depth, but just kind of a. Um, <laughs> slight depth. That's like, like in a stealth way. <laughs> LRE yes. stealth, like the cliff notes for us old people. So LRE is a consideration, and it simply says that we must educate students with disabilities with their non-disabled peers to the maximum extent possible with supports, supplementary aids, and strategies. And when we've done that and it doesn't work, then we make adjustments. And then after we made the adjustments, if it doesn't work, then we have a conversation about, is this setting, whatever that is, the most appropriate so LRE is not general ed. I don't know who said that. And that we need to remember that the least restrictive environment must be considered to maximize the student's IEP goals across each content area. Okay. And how do you feel about paras being removed from a room after fighting AEA for what's right for kids? So I don't feel right about teachers or staff members being removed when they're effectual uh, partners for a student's education. I am not an administrator or I've never worked in a school, as we all know. Um, the shenanigans that happen in schools make no sense to me, um, but we need to support our teachers, our special ed teachers, our related structural service providers, and our parents. Okay, and kind of along those lines, what can I do about gen ed teachers not applying modifications and accommodations because they say they don't have time? So I would gently, lovingly tell them there's this scary lady on TikTok and she files all the time with the U.S. Department of Education. And even if I love you, I will file on you if I find out that you're not delivering their modifications and their accommodations. It wouldn't matter if you were my pastor because you denying a child their education and special education could impact their ability to be a successful adult. And I take that personally. So it's a requirement and the school takes federal funds for it. And so when I file with the U.S. Department of Education, I'm going to say Alicia, the general ed math teacher, didn't provide the accommodations. And I'm going to say Bonnie, the special ed teacher, didn't file. And then you're going to have to tell the federal government, oh, no, 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 Karen was wrong. Let me show you my accommodation log that I took every single day. And whether you believe me or don't believe me, you don't want to be part of a federal investigation. I promise. Okay. And Jesse asked, emotion, regulation, impairment, um, behavior is manifestation of their disability. Can you still suspend? So um, when we have um, an action by a student that requires consideration of discipline, then the student has a 504 or an IEP. We have to, by law, um, look at, is this a manifestation of their disability, right? Even if it hasn't happened before, is it likely maybe this level of impulsivity, emotionality is connected. They're not always connected. Um, if we say yes as a committee, then usually, not always, there's a great reduction in what would be the normal disciplinary action for the student that could understand and follow the student code of conduct. So what's really important as a good offense is you want to make sure that in that section where it says student code of conduct, uh, does the student's behavior impede his learning or learning of others? In there, I'm going to put, hey, Billy has some history of Kung Fu fighting his friends, karate topping people when he gets upset. He's very dysregulated. He's been in a psychiatric unit. He, you, you want to populate that when we before we say, of course, he can follow the student code of conduct. That's your first place. But um, it shouldn't happen that if you have uh, agreed that it's a manifestation of his disability, that we follow the same level of discipline. But I have had that happen needs bedtime during the core subjects, unless he's just a, a behavioral need and his behavior impacts him across all settings. Um, but yeah, that's, we call that made up. So there's a little article, January 21st, 2011 from OSEP, Office of Special Education Programs. It says, hey, 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 don't think that you're going to pull off RTI or something else to delay testing or special education. And what do you do when a school evaluation and a neuropsychologist evaluations do not agree on IQ? So that's not unusual. Um, you know, we've talked about this before at, at length. It's really important that you understand when you bring a medical professional's um, documentation 
it's not going to be like the schools because it's in a clinic and they're, they're doctors, right? Whereas a school-based member is making determinations based on um, a measurement. Um, again, it depends on the IQ test. If I give you the WJ4 and then I give you the WISC, everybody on the planet is going to have higher scores on the WISC. Everybody. That's how it works. The WJ4 is a much harder cognitive test. It's much more laborious and it's much longer. And so I can have a kiddo that has an IQ in the five percentile and he could go on to be a multi-billionaire. And I can have a kid who's the valedictorian who grows up to be a hooligan. And I love a good hooligan. So IQ is not the end all be all. It's a measurement of a brain skill. And so we need to look at the child in totality, language, emotion, IQ, and find the best way to maximize his strengths. Hey, man, then Jesse asks, um, how does someone become an advocate? Well, you like children. <laughs> if you've met other advocates, that's not always the case. So if you love kiddos and you want to help these 7.5 million children um, have successful student outcomes, then please come train with us. Come join the Academy. We have the Academy on Tuesday nights, $47. Stay as long as you want. We have hundreds of gazillions of hours and workbooks you can train. We have a two-day intensive. We have it in person or on demand. <laughs> And then we also have um, the mastermind, which is a deep, 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 deep dive um, to be um, amazing special education advocates. Um, there's no requirement to be an advocate. You don't have to have any sort of anything. The people behind me are trying to be clever, and I don't know what they're doing. Are you being clever, Alicia? Hey, look, me and Bonnie are talking sign language to each other. You just keep um, being a in front of the camera. <laughs> Um, someone says, does the state or federal law require declining trends? Of we just read that muffin. Just read okay, that. Right. If y'all weren't so right, busy well, being right goofballs. It. See these people in the back? Right, high right. IQ. Both these girls back there? Real high IQ. Okay. All right. Anyways. Um, they had one that was talking about some two of these. She has two students in her classroom whose behaviors are starting to um, you know, impede on others. They're hitting, punching, biting, all those things. I did ask if they had an IP. She said that both of them were on an IP. I did ask if they have a behavior intervention plan, but I haven't seen a response yet. But she was asking, what can she do at this point? So you got to reach out to leadership. There's a reason that you have a principal. There's a reason you have a system principal. It's their job to make sure that their classes are staffed. It's not your job to manage children's behaviors and or um, um, special education without the right support. Yes. Okay. Um, someone said they requested a BIP and the school start stated they didn't do that unless something happens. What would, what would you like to happen? So a behavior intervention plan is born out of a FBA, a functional behavior assessment. And that is because you have a behavior that impacts your ability to learn. And it's more, it's higher than what the general education teacher can provide solely. It could be everything from non-compliance not completing your work, to not staying in your designated area. Schools are really big about your designated area. Um, so it doesn't mean something has to happen. Um, you have a behavior that impedes your learning and um, it's not able by the general ed teacher to um, address it on her own. I'm into that. Uh, Emily <laughs> says, is it illegal to just do a review of records repeatedly on a re-eval? It is, unfortunately. Parents don't understand the impact of that. I had a kiddo, I always say the other day, which could have been three years ago, and he's um, 6'2 and an 8th grader, and his last evaluations, he was in 2nd grade. And we just kept pulling him forward, because, you know, people say stuff to parents that sound really good, like, oh, you don't want us to, like, pull him out of class and do more testing, and we all know that he is blah, 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 blah. And parents are like, okay, I mean, it sounds right, it sounds right. We don't do the testing to penalize the school, we do the testing to make sure that we have the right data points. Um, I did have a question that was an anonymous one that came in. Okay. And they, they were wondering if how do you feel about discipline when it comes to a child who's in special education? Do they, like, I think they're what they're saying is, is if the teacher is doing everything and following everything and the child is still breaking the code of conduct, do you agree with them getting the, the school following the code of conduct? Yeah, I mean, if they understand it, it wasn't um, a characteristic of their disability. Let me just give you a little story which I tell the two days is true. So this lady called me one time and her son really struggled with reading and he had dyslexia. 
And she said, um, I got a referral to you. I heard you're the best in the world. And of course she was right. And she said, so my son had a disciplinary action. I want you to come to the MDR. I said, okay, what was his disciplinary action? And what was the behavior? And she goes, he bought pot brownies to school. Um, usually not a characteristic of dyslexia, but tell me more. I said, so how did he get that? I bought it for him. I bought this. Oh my gosh. So ma'am, ma'am, that that's no, no, that I, I'm good, but that's not a manifestation of a reading disability or dyslexia. She goes, it's okay. His other friends in the tennis team, they'll be at um, out of district placement together. So that, of course, if you have a math disability and your child punches somebody in the face at lunch, that's not a correlation. It has to correlate with their disability, right? If you have, you know, an orthopedic impairment and you were AFOs and you bring a knife to school, they're, they're not connected, right? But there are kids that don't understand their actions. They have history of trauma and um, behaviors and dysregulation, acute behaviors. I'm not just talking about somebody, there, there is a way to tease out choice and disability. And so, um, but you know, most of my kiddos have a disability unless they're emotionally, they have emotional disturbance or they have severe autism. Uh, or severe ADHD, those are the kiddos that are going to have a consideration for an MDR. If you struggle with math calculations, you're going to be going to out-of-district placement. Yes. Um, Nicole asks, is, an, is the accommodation and modification created from the SPED teacher or the regular ed teacher? Yes, because we're a team. Right, which is why you always have general ed and special education teacher. If the student's in, in special ed, then in a special ed setting, then the general ed teacher supports that teacher. If the student is in a general ed teacher, the special ed teacher, general ed class, the special ed teacher supports her. So you're always working together, always. Otherwise, it would be predetermination at its highest. Great nurse mama, which we love nurses. Asked if the therapist thinks that she has met all goals, but felt she still needs PT or OT in the school system, is, is the school system required? Yeah, so meeting your goals has nothing to do about with whether or not you still need special education. Almost 99% of my clients and the girls behind me, all their clients meet their goals. That's, that's the whole point. You write goals that are achievable, right? So just because you meet your goals doesn't mean you're out of special education. Then we teach the next thing, right? So the special ed goals that you had in fourth grade math, you probably have different math goals in fifth and sixth grade. So, so you adjust them to the rigor and the state standard. Okay. And then average millennial. Um, An average and, millennial. Is that even a thing? I don't know. But I know, <laughs> I know that Chris, uh, Christina is in the comments and she was talking to her. So she, I think she got a PWN, but she put a WPN, but you know. WPN, uh, I feel like that's not like a, a network in Detroit. I know, right? A radio station. It says she got it for the staff not to go into the AAC um, because of her TikToks. And she doesn't know what to do. And so Christina asked for more clarification. And she said, like, they don't put the teachers' names or the pictures of the teachers in, in the AAC. Why? So do you have advice? Why? I guess maybe she made a TikTok about them. I don't know. Oh. Well, if you have an AAC device and your student's using it at school, I would certainly recommend that when you come home at night that you pull the data to see how often it was used and in what settings. I have all my clients do that. Somebody has asked about um, what do you do with a kid that elopes from the playground. So I'm going to answer that in two parts. So number one, there's no requirement for schools to have fences. I don't, like I can't make this up, Right. I think it's funny when playgrounds have like three-sided fence. Like the point was, because there's a side that's open, right? Um, if a child is not able to stay on the campus, he's being denied FAPE. So uh, then I would look at out-of-district placement if the principal cannot give you the hands to support it. Awesome. Look at landline just roughing them up. They just made it up. because I'm up at the top. I love that. They just She's made doing it up. She's a great job. Actually, there's a school district nationwide called Make It Up As You Go Independent School District. It's coming to a city near you. Okay. So, Danny asked, what type of paperwork would you recommend when going see a develop developmental neurologist? 
what type of paperwork would I bring to the neurologist? Yeah. Um, so I think the neurologist is full of paperwork. Uh, he's probably going to have me fill out some sort of history, you know, the parental history. Um, but they have what they need. Um, this one says, how do I best advocate for my son to wear a recording device? He has an IEP and an, uh, and is autistic POC. Yeah. So, um, my love, I, um, as an advocate, as somebody that's allowed to, um, represent families in due process in Texas and, and allowed to participate by hearing officers and a member of COPA, I would never tell you to send your child into a setting with a recording device on them. Um, it's not legal. Um, what you hear is not legal. More importantly, it's not admissible. That being said, I do know people that do that, and it's not my business what people do, but I think people think that you could use that information. And it actually could get you in a lot of trouble, actually. Yep, ask that lady from North. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's a lady. No, seriously, we we did a press conference yes. in New Orleans, and um, somebody reached out to our staff to to meet us for lunch because I love a good lunch. And she was very passionate, and I love people. Um, but she was recently arrested; like she's in big trouble for recording. Um, does IQ play a role in classroom placement? It shouldn't play a role in isolation for anything. Yes. When will I be in Oklahoma? <laughs> tomorrow? Is it tomorrow we're going? You're not going to Oklahoma tomorrow. <laughs> she said I'm not so going. Just a nice comment that I'm my own kryptonite left said, I just want to say you and your advocates are amazing humans and do great things for these children. So. Oh, well, we love you right back. That was nice. Thank you. Um, Graham Johnson, 84, asked, why are special education teachers struggling with stress in such a significant way at the high school level? What? Because they're not supported. Same reason regular ed teachers are, are, are stressed. They're not supported. We shove teachers and special ed teachers and service providers on the front lines, and we sit back and go, I don't know what the problem is. I do. If, if I did that in my business, business model for people that worked for me, I'd be out of business, but it's a government entity and people are trapped by the teacher retirement system, the golden handcuffs. So, um, we don't support, it's a terrible business model. Public school is a terrible business, business model. Yes. There's a little bit of a debate going on in the comments, not necessarily a question, but maybe just give your input about the tools that different psychi uh, psychologists use to, for the IQ testing. Someone says the WJ is not as reliable. Um, do you have any opinions on that? Um, so, I mean, all, all, all formal testing is reliable if the person using it is seasoned and they pick the right instrument. Well, you have to understand there's over 308 IQ tests. They're expensive. Um, we just had, I think it was one of Alicia's clients. Um, they picked an IQ test I had never heard of. Hawaii, help! Like the acronym is actually help. Well, it's cheap. Look it up. Pearson.com, aka the mafia. Um, education mafia. That's what and I love the mafia. Um, but Pearson, it's just such disgusting, the whole testing industry. But there are IQ tests that are thousands of dollars. Well, let's see thousands. Hey Donna, or you know, something that I have on the shelf. So two great tests that I like are the unit. And Leitner, Leiter 3, L-E-I-T-E-R. They're very expensive, right? And so I trust a test that's given by somebody that knows how to give it. Each test has specific protocols. You don't just pick them up and roll them out. You have to build rapport with kids. You have to give them incentives. So I love, 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 love the WJ4. When I'm looking for an SLD and a child doesn't have a speech impairment and there's not emotionality, I'm not going to give a WJ4. I had someone give a WJ4 to a little girl with Down syndrome with a speech impairment who was, wait for it, five years old. What? Five years old. Yeah. I won't tell you what district. It rhymes with Frisco Independent School District. So there's that. And I told her, well, first I looked it up and she had been a diagnostician for eight days. So I got somebody new to redo the test. So 
You have to know what you're doing, right? If you don't know how to use the test, it's not, I had a lady one time, I said, why did you give her that test? She said it was on the shelf. Uh, are you speaking? And and she meant it. And she was also the IEP facilitator. What's el what else? Maybe you could be the superintendent. So, now you have to know what you're doing. So that's why it's really important that you're trained in special education. That's why we want everybody to join the academy so that you would know if you got something, if it's bologna sauce. I can look at a test, uh, the way they delivered it, and the data summary and conclusion, and know if that person knew how to, to do it. I was in a meeting the other day with, I think all of them were 12 years old. I think they were just dropped off at their sack lunch and their corduroys by their mom. And the, the psychologist had to be seven years old. And I said to her, is this your report? And she was so sweet and tiny and small hips. And she still had, you know, a thyroid. And um, I said, is this your psychology report? She said, yes. I said, there's no observations. Mm-hmm. I'm like, my, my answer is in the question, right? I said, so, but it'd be normal that a psychologist would do three, two or three observations, right? And she said, yes. I said, but you didn't do any, right? She goes, uh-huh. I said, why didn't you do any? She goes, because the mom requested the test. Let's stop talking. Uh, what? She goes, well, this is not an initial. This was a reevaluation. Oh, gosh. help me. So I have a paper bag that I breathe in. I just, <laughs> that's why I'm on Zoom. So I can just mute my camera and just breathe into my bag. Yeah. So people either know how to do their job or they do not. And if you get an evaluation from somebody at the school that they did not do their job, then ask for that to be redone by the district level. That's a very long answer to a question that I, nobody asked, Amen but that. I but I enjoyed all of it. <laughs> um, what if the school doesn't give you the consent to evaluate form timely to start the 60-day time? So you lead that conversation. Dear Buttercup, what time would you like me to be in the office today to sign notice and consent? When would you like me to sign notice and consent? What, you want me to come to your house? Do you want me to meet you at Piggly Wiggly, Dollar General, Publix, Vons, Ralph's, where? Wegmans? Where would you like me to meet you? Of course, Alicia doesn't know any of that because she's never left the country of Louisiana. You're right. Uh, I did look at you like, what the where? Wegmans. <laughs> Can we just raise our hand for Wegmans? So good. I don't know what that is. Okay. Oh, my Anyways. gosh. Landline said... <laughs> Wear a big shirt that stays out of compliance. Compliance. I just feel like we should walk around with like little pads of paper and give people like yellow warnings. You, ma'am, no accommodations log. This is your warning. It's Tuesday. Well, this question goes along with that, and it says, do districts really care if state complaint is filed or are they just brushed off? They care if a federal complaint is filed, and I'm teaching every one of my advocates how to file them. Um, I had a lovely young man. He goes, we've been really busy this year. I'm like, you're welcome. The TikTok and all of these little special ed bosses that I'm raising up. Um, I want them to learn to file effectually and I want them to be opened. And our cases get open. And you better believe when the federal government rolls in, it's not the good old boy system. We got the good old boy system in Florida, California, Texas, everywhere. The federal government, they came to play. But a boom. Chelsea yeah, said, as a teacher, what do we do when diagnos when the diagnostician and the general ed teacher disagree on services for a student? What? So here's what I say. I love diagnosticians, and I pretend to be one late at night, and I love LSSPs. However, they have great impact, and they're never going to teach a child. So, uh, you know, the general ed teacher probably has more contact with the student, um, and so... I would say, since you have an opinion, I assume that you're about to share some data that supports that. Is Bucky's the same as Piggly Wiggly? Oh, ma'am. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. No. Yesterday, no. I wore a full beaver onesie. Did you guys all see that on the on the book face? I have a full. Would y'all like me to wear that tomorrow night? Just by show of hands, would you like me to wear the, full, the, be the Bucky beaver outfit tomorrow night? I only got one heart. I'm going to need more than that. Yeah. My one, my one antler. Okay, Adriana. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll wear it. Because you know what? You can never have enough plaid with two big teeth right over your bangs. I'm here for it. It is hot. It is hot. 
And they I don't know it. who does Bucky's clothing line, but it says it's a small medium. <laughs> I mean, I think it'd be like 12 months. Look at all the hearts. Up. So you're wanting me to wear yeah. a costume tomorrow night? It's the Bucky's. Bucky's for the win. Okay. Um, oh, someone said my son's advocate is Miss Cindy Ingram, and she's the best. We, we love Cindy. We love Cindy. Cindy. Here's Cindy Ingram in a meeting. She's real quiet, and then she'll go like this. Let me tell you what. Let me tell you what. When she starts pointing that pen, you better just say, yes, ma'am. I love Cindy. Somebody said, are all those hearts for a gas station? Ma'am, uh, Bucky's <laughs> is not a gas station. It's where you go to be reinforced and spend money that you didn't need to spend. Where's Demetrius when you need them? Anyways, um, Mouse and Moore said, how can you convince admin to hire, how can she convince admin to hire you to train their staff? So I do professional development all over. I'm doing, uh, I have a one in January. So um, I know lots of school districts play my TikToks at the beginning because people tell me I had somebody that didn't like me. Can you imagine somebody not liking me? Like, I am one of my favorite people. Like, if you don't like me, you probably were dropped on your head as a toddler. And she really doesn't like me. It was for all diagnosticians. And she played a video where I said, hi, yeah, we were picking up the data collection logs. And then she turned off. She goes, and this better never happen in our district. I'm like, so are we going to hug it out or... No, I love schools. I'm going to the state conference in Wyoming. If you'd like to come there in April, it'll be myself and who is it, Alicia? Um, that kid with an IEP. Oh, yeah. That yeah. other guy on the TikTok. Him and me. I'll have my big hair. He'll have his big accent. It's going to be fantastic in the Wyoming. You should come. So that was Demetrius who was talking about Bucky's in the gas station. Demetrius, you're about to, you're about to have to stay after class. That's hilarious. Demetrius. Uh, Jude says hi. Hi, Jude. Uh, Tracy says, this is so interesting. I'm in SPED admin for 20 plus years in education, and she loves hearing from the advocacy point of view. We, we love great admin. Look at it. it says, I think this one's for both of you, though, Alicia and Karen. Oh. What okay. do you think about the problems Louisiana's IEP system is having? Pink Legacy would like to know. Well, Pink Le Legacy, I'm calling my friend, Mr. Kennedy, and we're about to light up S Stephanie B. Wong because we want it to be right in Louisiana because my grandson's there. And I had to eat some stuff yesterday called, what do you call it? It's like a soup thing and stuff's floating. Gumbo. Oh, gumbo, ma'am. Gumbo. And uh, for my input, Jude, Jude said it perfectly. When he said, Pfft. Yep. Yeah, Louisiana, <laughs> nicest people, worst system. The worst. Yeah. But I was in a, let me just tell you, and I can attest to this. I was in a meeting in Louisiana, and this lady was being rude and a criminal. I said, You know what? You are reckless, and I can't imagine how many children's lives you ruined. Bloop. And then I found out the next week she retired. Uh, Emily said, can a special education teacher take an advocacy training to do their job better? And me and Bonnie are going to answer. Ready, Bonnie? One, two, three. Yes. yes. <laughs> three quarters of the, almost, I actually, I think we barely have any parents left. Almost everybody that comes to the training are school-based members. It's, it, yeah. And you know why? Because they love kids and they want to go back to school and serve kids. We want you to come, love kids, and go back to school. We need you. Um, come on down. And we, we have shenanigans and lots of caffeine and too much chocolate. Is a I'm parent advocate a lawyer? Bonnie or Christina, whoever wants to go. No. Okay. So, Christina. Uh, she's here in the typing. <laughs> yes, you should ask the classy sped advocates. Donna has her um, master's. Like she like went to school and paid attention and finished something I didn't do. Um, and, um, you know, the reason people take the training is because they want the knowledge, right? So the trainings are in Houston area, and then they're always on demand. We're not hiring, but we're training. And within 90 days after our training, you should be a full-time advocate. Only 7.5 million children have an IEP, and about 40 million have a stupid, stupid, stupid 504. Did I say stupid? She's just, that's the one who was the SPED admin who was asking. Come on down. Tracy F. Wilson. I like that she has all that in there. I wonder if there was already a Tracy Wilson, so she had to throw in the F. That's probably Tracy Fantastico. That's probably what the F stands for. I'm talking about 
the training. Just yes, you can do the train. If somebody's asking about yeah. training on Zoom for school districts, absolutely. Yes. I wear a beaded backless uh, sequin gown for all Zoom trainings for school districts. And yes, I do a lot of school districts that are just the adults, like the principals and the leadership. How not to have me at a federal complaint in your school district. So how long should special ed departments keep student records? So they keep student records five years after the last action. So I always um, tell parents that when your kiddo has uh, graduated, have the, your records um, surrendered to you. Surrendered. House and more said that I've been watching your lives weekly and finally signed up for your academy today. Yay! Have you ever advocated in Fairfax County, Virginia? Haven't we all advocated in Fairfax County, Virginia? Can we just talk about Tri-County? Can we just talk about thank you, Lord, for the, the military bases? But the people in Virginia need prayer. I was in a meeting in Virginia, and the guy goes, I said, so are you the diagnostician? He goes, I am a member of this meeting. I said, are you the diagnostician? He goes, I am a member of this meeting. I said, you don't know if you're a diagnostician? Because I would know. He's like, I answered your question. Oh, yeah. So Tanya Moore, I believe she's in Texas because she's asking, can you record an ARD meeting as a parent? So Tanya Moore is and she's in the Academy. She's in the Panhandle. Of course you can in Texas. Yeah, you just, as soon as we start, I just say, hey, Bonnie, I want to let you know I'm recording. So get out your boom box. So the confidentiality where we say everything in this meeting is confidential except for people that need to know has nothing to do with your right to record. And also listen to this. Listen, lean in. You can record in any state under ADA. Listen to me. You can record an IEP meeting in any, any state under ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act. If you indicate without my ability to record, I'm not going to be able to fully process this and I need to listen to it again. Awesome. Learn something new today for yeah. sure with that one. Yeah. Do you have any SPED directors in your group? We have superintendents. We have, I know we have a SPED coordinator and we have a 504 coordinator. Um, we have hundreds of people signed up in the academy. About 50 or 60 of us are live every Tuesday. Most of them don't go on live because they don't want their name at the bottom that says Bobby Joe, right? Because Bobby Joe probably is a big deal at their school district. Hey, um, do your vials get reviewed in every state? I know that we have to upload all of our initials and timeline. That was from the landline. Uh, they don't get reviewed. So Texas is usually the worst at auditing, but they've taken their auditing up a notch. Used to, they would show up and say, listen, we'll be there in three weeks. Give us four files. <laughs> so we would give them really good files, but now they're showing up and just taking files. So that's much better. This is a good one. If the school is understaffed, can an IEP be implemented with no qualified teachers? No, you've denied a student a free appropriate public education. And I would file, well, actually I would just, uh, I mean, we'll train you too, but I, when I'm in a meeting, I just say, and we'll be waiting on a compensatory offer by the close of business. But you can always file, and when you file, whether it's state, due process, mediation, or a federal filing with the U.S. Department of Education Office of Civil Rights, they're gonna wanna know what's the problem and what would it take for you to resolve it. I always say first, because I love teachers, is I want the school trained on their responsibilities and duties as it relates to ADA, 504, um, and IDEA with a two-year corrective action plan. And then I also want compensatory time for the student to return him to the place he would have been had the IDEA violation not occurred. Yes, you can hire me if you are on the planet. If you're not on the planet, you can't hire me. <laughs> and um, Kiki wants to know, what's a good resource for IDEA law in plain English? What's a good resource for IDA law in plain English? We'll call it IDA. Here it is in plain English. So it cracks me up when school-based members are like, um, I took a class in college. I know everything about social education law. Really? You've read all 115 of these pages. You know all 400 pages of your state code. You don't. That's why you need to join the academy so we can get smart together. So this is brand new. It just came out. I'm sure. Is this backwards? Do you guys see it backwards or do you see it right? Kids? It's backwards. 
Does this help? That's not funny. This is a lady told me one time. Um, she's like, there's. I, I was being very funny because I'm also a professional comedian. And this kid was doing half homebound, half um, in school. And I said, and he's in a wheelchair. I said, it doesn't matter when the bus comes. They couldn't pick up the bus. Just roll him out there and lock it. The bus will come around. And this lady goes, there is no sarcasm in my special ed meetings. I'm like, well, I wouldn't go to one. She didn't like that. So. She was very intense. Am I pricey to hire? Not at all. I'm free with payment. Um, I'm the best investment that your kid will ever make for their special education product. So there's that. There's back, it's backwards, but if you're, dile if you're dyslexic, it's correct. That's funny. Look at all the funny people. Yeah, so this is the Office of Federal Register Code of Regulations. It just came out in September 2022. It's a lovely read. It's fantastic. So this one just is a comment that says a district admin reported me to the state for advising a parent to ask for an advocate. So that's unfortunate. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. Hey, Amanda. It's unfortunate that we're not all on the same team, team kiddo. It's kind of weird, right? I mean, you know about that, Bonnie, right? Yeah, absolutely. You're, they you're do, Jesse Cakes. This is where I got it on the Amazon. Um, and then a few people are asking, how do they join? So I'm assuming um, the Academy. Or yeah, so the Academy, everything is just above my natural hairdo. Up there in the thing of the deal of the link of the drop down of the thing of the bio. You go like that and then that. Um, oh, thank you, Esther. Um, Esther is the best. If you ever want somebody to ter be terrified, just have Esther send them an email. <laughs> She's fantastic. Esther's like this. You're going to get it and I'm calling Karen. Click. It's like, it's like I'm rich dad mom. Um, so you can join the academy at specialeducationacademy.com. There's information about the two-day intensive. All the kids behind me, have you ever been to the two-day intensive? Just shout it out, Christina. Yes. Yes, yes. Ta several times. How many times have you been, Christina? How many times? I'm sorry, what? Al Alicia? Two. Two? Two. No, then you've been we, more than that. Did the on no, three. Sorry, three. Remember the time you were, again. don't forget the time you were threatened. Right. Yeah. Christina's like that. Bonnie's been With 75. We can't, we can't get rid of Bonnie. We just, we just drive up. She's just staying in the parking lot. Um, and then Alicia, Alicia is just, she's, she puts she the pH there. in fun. I'm just telling you. Yeah. And here's the thing hey, about the two day intensive. I get out of the other country, right? So okay. I just go see Karen. Yes. So the two day intensive is amazing. And once you're an alumni, you can come back for free as many times as you want. You know why? Because I want you to be trained. I want you to be trained. So um, the more that you hear it and the better um, versed you are to serve kiddos, the better we all win. So here's a good one for you, Karen. Um, is it okay if the school says there, my son won't take an executive functioning class instead of his elective, they're going to move him from an IEP to a 504? Um, that's where that I would just turn on that song. Everybody was Kung Fu fighting. Ding, 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 ding. No, you're all too old to know what that is. Um, it's name. No, we're not doing all that. We're on, we're, we're going to do stuff based on data. So we're not moving them because I, when I love how schools threaten parents, right? We serve a child under an IEP because that's what they need. I, I don't see kids that need a 504. They need an IEP. So again, if you're going to make a movement any direction, you certainly are going to have data to support that that you can screen share and send us all a copy of. They're all asking for the name of the book again. They're all on Amazon buying it right now. Here it is. Amazon's going to run out. It's, if I do it upside down, can y'all see it? Upside down? Oh, is it really upside down? Just read the name, woman. The Office of Federal Registry, Code of Federal Regulations, Title 34. Volume two of four. Don't buy all volumes. Um, I'm taking my ball and going home if you don't. <laughs> Landline, what state are you from? You're so funny. I think you've got to be like a northerner. You've got that high level of snark. We like it. We're here for it. All right. Missouri. Oh. Is that north? Hey, Missouri. Yeah, I feel like it is. North of Louisiana. 
just a tad. Yeah. State testing. My son has an IEP. Is he required to take the test? Everybody in the United States of America that goes to public school between the third grade and 11th grade are required to take some state testing. That's how that is. Do I have thoughts so, on it? Can- I do. They're not good thoughts. Conroe. Yay. Kimmy from, from the block. And she spelled Somebody it. wants to know how far out you book. She's a miss again and she needs an advocate. I, I book out a gazillion years. Here, there, everywhere. Do you have to tell them your lawyer is coming to their IEP? Well, yes. You tell them. Yeah, we tell them everybody's coming. You should just say for fun, even if we never meet, you should just email. I mean, just, I'm not saying that I'm impactful, but you should just email the school and you've had it and just say, my advocate, Karen Mayer Cunningham, is coming and just see what happens. Just see, you don't have to send me a check. You do have to send me salt and pepper shakers. I collect salt and pepper shakers. I just have to sh- show you these. I just got these from a friend. Can we just talk about that? Are those <laughs> so cute? They're golden girl. So I have about 5,000 salt and pepper shakers. I collect them. It makes me happy. No pressure. Um, P.O. Box 489, Kima, Texas, 775. Is that too much? No. We'll put the address for all gifts in. Put it in your link tree. We'll put it in the link tree. Yes. Unlike that girl the other night who had a a cash app. Who are those people with the cash app? Yes, I come to meetings everywhere via Zoom. I go to do processes everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, We have, well, I think we have one. I have one more and then y'all can go. Uh, Someone asked, what is the difference between the academy and the two day that you're talking about? So the academy is we, every Tuesday night for two hours, we train on the law, the law, the law. So right now we're in the middle of a series for assistive technology. And the acad- the two-day intensive is an in-person training. Day one is eight hours long, how to advocate for anyone, however you sit at the IP table. And they, day two is to become a professional advocate. We also have that on demand. Once I told them I had an advocate, the school freaked out. I really like that. Um, do we have any public due processes coming up? Um, I have two due processes that will be public, um, but we did just win our due process with Rusty. Um, The hearing officer actually said, I don't sleep. Somebody asked when I sleep. Who does that? Um, The hearing officer actually said, because we can release it, we'll probably do a live on it. Um, The hearing officer said the uh, CCISD, Clear Creek Independent School District, their vision department needed a complete overhaul, in quotations. All right. Can a parent ask for a teacher's qualifications? And if so, what does that proof look like? So you don't need to ask for their qualifications. I just say, um, can you tell me the second teacher's, the teacher's full name? I don't, I got your qualifications right here. You're in Tennessee. Super. What's your full name? Please don't tell me it's Debbie Johnson. Okay. I just look it up in the meeting. So Debbie, it says here you're a level two aid. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. And you have been since 1984. Okay. So I already know what their qualifications are. I look them up. Before I ever go into a meeting, I look up everybody's qualifications. So we're all crystal clear. Um, Actually, we just had somebody in Puerto Rico. I have clients all over the globe. I've always had clients all over the globe. I usually just scared them by telephone, but now I can scare them with a new outfit. So what do you do when a district says we don't do AT evaluations here? Here. It's just like like on some sort of like rodeo plantation. Yeah. So um, the Assistive Technology Act of 1998 is one of the eight pillars of IDEA. So if you're in America, you, you do it here. So if you can't do it, you can have somebody private come in and do it for us. Um, but we do it everywhere. On the planet. Because the federal law, it's like federal. It just goes everywhere. Someone's asking, is is there a complaint to file that's not as intense as an OCR? Why? Why would you want less intense? We need, have we not been doing nice since 1975? Who wants, listen, if your son's being accused of a crime and you might go to jail for something he didn't do, do you want Less intense. We need intense. If we're going to have education or special education turn around America, we need some intense. Okay. 
Someone asked if you can talk about how you how you get clients. Um, I've never run an ad. You don't have to get clients as an advocate. You literally could go online today, and I tell people this on the second day of the training, and you could post, I'm a mediocre, average special ed advocate. And then watch this. <sighs> there aren't advocates. I live in a little tiny city called Houston. Um, we calculated about 7.5 million uh, people during Harvey five years ago. And I would say respectfully, there are two advocates in the city and I'm one of them. The other one is a young man. Um, and there aren't advocates. There are people that go to meetings and call themselves advocates. They're not advocates. They don't do this 24 hours a day and know the law and federal law and special ed attorneys. And they don't, they don't do it for a living. <clears throat> So, yes, we only need about 8 billion advocates. Yes. Someone said, if a child is on the spectrum and above grade level, should they have an IEP versus a 504? If they have an educational need, they have an IEP. I had a client that she was the salutatorian. I think she's pretty smart. But she had emotional needs that needed to be addressed, right? So, the language is, do you have an educational need? Do you have a functional need? Do you have a communicative need? Do you have a social need? Do you have an emotional need? Do you have a counseling need? Do you need help staying dressed, getting undressed? Are you a donning, a doffer? Do you have language needs? It's an educational need. Say it with me. Educational need. Doesn't say academic. Amen all day long. Amen. Hallelujah. Pass the plate. Fantastic hair. Super Karen. Thank you. <laughs> um... So, name's not Mel. So, we don't know what her name is, but it's not Mel. Um, she was telling us about how she filed the state complaint. She hasn't heard anything. Why, and her question is, why isn't this, the district responding to my state complaint on time? And will they get in trouble? So, once you file a state complaint, it has nothing to do with you anymore. It's between the state and the district. Again, it's really important that you know how to file correctly. One of the things we deep dive on day two is how to file. People file terribly, which means we have systems that are backed up by people filing, clogging it up, and it's never going to get looked at because they file passionately. You have to file legally, right? And so your state complaint has a 60-day turnaround. It goes straight to the school district special ed attorney, and it's between them and the state investigator. It doesn't include you. Somebody asked how advocates get paid, and um, we get paid by the client. Um, and of all the jobs that I can think of, it's not a job that you have to chase down payment. People are happy to pay for good advocates. Um, it's an amazing investment in their kiddos and it's a game changer. <clears throat> so much charm said she's very interested in your advocacy training. She has a master's in education and has taught in the public and private schools. Come on down. Somebody said I'm not a I'm not a Karen, I'm a sugar baker. Anything with sugar I'm a fan of. Um yeah. Okay, I want you to answer this question, okay? Okay. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. All right, Tracy wants to know if you can please tell us how you got into this. She's truly interested. Yeah, um, so I was like every other good American mother, you know, having a glass of white Zinfandel for breakfast as I sent my kids off to school. Um, and my son became really sick um, and lost all of his language at about 18 months and um, was chewing his fingers and um, I'm thinking this is a problem. And one of my clients at a salon told me that um, kids in Texas, if you were speech delayed, you could go to school. I was like, sweet. There's always an answer. So I got him evaluated. He didn't talk. He didn't talk during the evaluation. This worked out good. So I sent him across the street with his Lion King backpack. And I was like, whew, that's fixed. They're going to fix everything. It's the school. They fix things. Um, and a month into it, they called CPS on us. Because he had these behaviors. And obviously, it was our fault. Um, and... I won't tell you everything that happened, you know. Um, I didn't like that. Um, I forgave her, worked it out with my creator, and then she called again. And then I was like, Ch -ch -ch. Um, and I went to the CPS office like a lunatic. Um, and the CPS worker was the first person that ever gave me a resource. And that was 20, oh, 25 years ago. Um, and it hasn't changed. It hasn't changed that we can't resource parents. And it's craziness, like craziness. Um, 
and um, I'm not the one to cross for my kids. I paid cash for them, and they're taking me to a nice nursing home. So um, I just started helping families. I came obsessed with the law, and I just thought, well, this, is, this is all good news. Like, this is good news. Like, we can just do this, and kids could win. And it was like, right? And I thought, mm -mm. and so I would go with families. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> um, but I have a very strong personality, and I'm committed to my position. And, you know, an advocate gets to see the whole file, which is what nobody else ever does. I get to see the whole file. I get to interview the parents and the doctors and everything. And the answer is in the file, the whole file. And so I just thought, like, this is good news. Everybody's going to want to know about this. Um, and unfortunately, we have locked the hands of teachers who love our kiddos and want to help. And teachers are like, okay, you have to say this at the meeting. Okay, say this at the meeting because I can't. And it's unacceptable. It's egregious. It's disgusting. It's bad manners. Um, the teachers that love kiddos are not even allowed to help them because of bean counters in school districts. So um, I'm obsessed with these kids. I'm obsessed with this law. Um, I'm obsessed with people winning, the whole team winning. I love public education. There's no better setting than public education when we get it right for the child. We don't always get it right, but when we do, it's the best setting. I love that story. Thank you for answering her question. You're welcome. Um, a lot of people are asking, how can they contact you? Just call 1-800-SIZZLE. Oh, wait, those gas prices. Um, now, you can reach out to admin at specialeducationacademy.com. Admin at specialeducationacademy.com. Yes. 1-800-SIZZLE. Uh, well, they already taken. <laughs> is Bonnie, is Liz? that your number? That's your number when people try to reach out to you? No, ma'am. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, Liz asks, do you advocate for anything else for adult services or education only? So I advocate for children with disabilities between the ages of 3 and 22. Because of what I do, I sort of ooch over into other areas and I send them off to somebody else. Uh, but I do do some kids at um, do do. That's good English. I serve kiddos in college. Obviously, they need accommodations on their five, on their uh, with the disability office. Can I do this and keep my job? You can if nobody knows about it. Do do. Yeah. Um, yeah, so a lot of our advocates uh, um, still work at schools, and they take on clients where they just do um, um, a case review, right? So I get an opening packet, like I came home today from another country called Louisiana, and I had two packets on my front door, so I prep them. It's called a records review. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend that you do it in your own district, or that'll help your retirement get here quicker. Um, but yeah, you'll you'll figure out in the training whether you want to take that training back and help the kids from the inside out or you think it'll be more successful helping them from the outside in. The two-day, January two-day is not full yet. So come on down. It is the, yes. what, I'm going to make it up. It's the 14th and 15th, is that right? Yes, that's yes, right. Yes, that's right. I'll be there. You're right, you're right. Okay. Is a child entitled, is a child entitled to compensatory if general ed teacher does not implement the IEP? I just, I'm sorry, I squirrel shiny penny. Somebody said, you're so forthright. How do you get away with that? Well, I don't get it. It's who I am. It's not, it's not a show. This is who I am. When I roll in, I'm in. I'm sorry. Okay, tell me the question again. I like it when you roll in. I roll a, in. I just want you to say as a parent, I, I like it when you roll in because we've been fighting for far too long. We don't need anybody to come in ready you know, to play. I just round. had a question. Do you think that their son could? No? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we don't need that. Nope. Okay. Um, someone said, is the child entitled to compensatory if the gen ed teacher does not implement the IEP? Is it, let me ask you a different question. Is it against the law for me to drive my car hundred miles an hour down the freeway? No, it's only illegal if a judge says it's illegal. So you get compensatory because a hearing officer, a mediation attorney, um, a federal attorney, um, negotiates um, a settlement for you. So it's illegal if it happens to one of my kiddos, um, but the so schools have to be afraid of you. And most schools are not afraid of parents. They're very good at talking over them. I got a candy cane. All right, so what happens when you go to an IEP meeting and there are more people at the table than were on the invite? Can you excuse me? I them? love that. I love a crowd. Wherever I go, I get a crowd. 
It just happens. Um, I was on a Zoom one time and I turned the little, uh, the squares just kept populating like 27 people. I said, wow, this is more people than my first wedding. It doesn't bother me who comes to a meeting. I don't care if you bring an attorney, three attorneys, um, your best friend, your uncle's mother. It doesn't matter to me. We're still going to go over the entire document and get it right. So you bringing a crowd doesn't intimidate me. It just shows me that probably you've done something worse than I know about. No, I'm not an attorney. Attorneys are really, really smart and finish college. Are schools allowed to change your IEP without your approval due to lack of staff? And schools are allowed to do, nobody can change an IEP without a convened IEP meeting. And then we start that conversation. And somebody keeps that. So, so the two day uh, digital is just on demand. Like you could start it in five seconds, right? Um, and then the two day in person, two day intensive is in person right now. We don't have any virtual scheduled. How long do most yeah. of your IEP meetings last? Not long. Like I'm German Irish. I want to get in, get out. I've got snacks to eat and more lipstick to put on. I'm not about that because I come prepared and ready to get down to business. I am not. Like, let's reschedule and reschedule and reschedule. I'm not doing that. Okay, hang on just a second. Y'all need to act right in the back. Okay, wait till your father gets back here. Sorry, it's my kids. <laughs> These are all adults behind me helping. Oh, when did uh, okay. can admin take your course to dig deeper? When did they? Wendy asked. Yeah, yes, I love admin. I, I love all the men, the women. I, I love all the people. I want them to have the knowledge. It's not about somebody getting caught. It's, it, if we're all equipped, we can serve kids. Amen. And then someone asked, um, how are you able to go into meetings and do this? How are you allowed access? Access? What do you mean? How am I allowed? Well, I'm, I'm the parents invited guest. Just like the parents wanted to invite their priest, their spouse. Parents are allowed to invite whoever they want. Um, to help with decision making, just like the school can invite whoever they want. Ooh, somebody just said administodians. Oh, I like that. Administodians. That is hysterical. Then somebody asked if you're using a AAC device and you want to add classroom classmates to the device, but the school won't let you. What can you do? That would be like understandable. Pictures, names. That would be understandable because yeah. you would have to have every one of those children's parents allow that. So I think that's fair. Did you? Can you read the one? Her child, twelve-year-old, uh, has epilepsy and needs your help. She's failing every class every year. Her name is uh, the lady who asked was Amy. Just send me an email at admin at specialeducationacademy dot com and we will get started. Yes. Okay, Christina. Oh. Well, I've been stuck on this one. Sorry. <laughs> what do you do when the district doesn't have applicants to provide for my son's aid? Okay. What the district does or doesn't do, none of my business. What, when the district chooses to deny a student um, FAPE, and you can be denied FAPE in a 504 or an IEP, then I'm going to file a federal complaint. Yeah. What constitutes getting an IEP or another plan? So um, you don't need any certification to be an advocate. You just need to love children and be trained. Um, so I don't, I don't know of other plans. I mean, the, I'm in 26 years, I might have had two kids that have ever should have even been on a 504. A 504 is a civil rights law. It, it, it's not an educational law. 504s in the 500s. Federal law. And the 300s, Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. 504 is a civil right. And it simply says, because you're an American, you can't be denied accommodations based on your disability. That's it. So but we are selling those $0 504s to everybody that will take it. And um, Stephanie asked, oh, um, a SPED teacher in high school asked, or she said that, Many people write IEPs so differently and goals. How, what can I read in order to learn better ways to write my goals? Um, so that's a really good question. I mean, I have um, um, in 
Texas, we have 20 ESCs, Educational Service Centers, and I took a class one time at Region 4. The class was $800 and 16 hours on just how to write IEP goals. Um, we break all that down for you in a very palatable way in the training. There's a saying, I'm not a teacher, God bless teachers. There's a saying that teachers take something really simple and can make it complicated. I'm not a teacher, so I take really complicated things, laws, and make them understandable for everybody that sits at the IEP table so that we can all um, make these kids legends. <gasps> Real Talk Sped is here. <gasps> What an honor. We love her. We, we, we love you. We just want you to know that in the most biblical way, but we do. We love you. Have you ever had a parent ask you to advocate for something that you felt was inappropriate yes. to be on the IEP? Yes. And you know, I tell them, no, you need to zip it. No, my clients don't run me. I've had Mm -mm. Like, I want him to have speech five times a week. He can have snacks five times a week. He's not getting speech five times a week. My job is to advocate. I don't advocate for parents. I advocate for students based on this bad boy. So my job is to help the parents sit down and zip it too, right? My job is to bring both parties to the same table, right? Parents have passion um, and schools have education. And sometimes um, it's my job to put them together. But I only advocate for the child. And I'll... If, if you don't want me and the way that I advocate, that is not a problem. Then we are not a match. There's no way it would be a match for everybody. As a teacher, I see the school sending home a child when his one-on-one -on -one is absent. So that's a denial of FAPE. You have to implement the IEP. There's no exceptions or exemptions. There was an exception when there's flooding. There's not exceptions when there's COVID. There's never going to be an exception to delivering the IEP. It's never coming. But the only way that you have that enforced is by filing at the state or federal level. Is it illegal for a school to tell you that they think your kids need to be medicated for ADHD? It's bad manners. That's when you... I always travel with a full-size pool noodle, and I just take it out and bonk them in the head. Oh, my gosh. I, sometimes I'm like, I don't know why you're talking. I don't know why you're talking. I don't know why you're talking. Um, hmm. I'm sure they would have liked to give me medicine in school, like buckets of it. Yeah. I, I love this question. Does ADA apply to everyone? If you're in America... Americans with Disabilities Act, it applies to everyone. Everyone? Yes. So every every school district playground in America, except for maybe three, are out of compliance. And so we teach people how to file. Um, I get school districts new uh, um, um, playgrounds for their entire district all the time. So this is about everybody getting everybody. Tidy home cleaning thought, she said, I thought you said ABA therapy. Yes. ABA therapy, tidy home cleaning might be for everyone. It should have been for my first husband, but I got rid of him. So. Why don't they have professional development for SPED IEP teachers? I don't know. Probably because there's not somebody amazing and fun to do it, but you tell them I'm available. Oh, tidy home cleaning is back. I need her to come over. I need tidy home cleaning to do Tidy home cleaning. Are you doing a live that we can all jump on? Yeah. Can you just show us how to do it, please? Quickly. Um, do all IEPs require students to go to the special education classroom daily? No. Nope. There are IEPs that never include a special education classroom. Amen to that. Um, can you elaborate on how playgrounds aren't in compliance? Sure, I will elaborate on that. So playgrounds have to have an entrance that's um, able for a child to push their own wheelchair from the school to the playground to every location. So can a child push himself in a wheelchair to the soccer field? Oh, no, it's all grass. Can your child push him out to the baseball field? Nope. Can your child get on the playground? Nope, it's ground mulch. Um, is there any playground handicap equipment? Nope. Um, is the ramp at least 36 inches wide and the exact measurement of an incline. So the incline is barely, it's barely an incline. I'm, I'm holding my hand up like I know it barely is. Um, but if you look up ADA playgrounds, um, there's quite extensive information on it. So it's just laziness and cheapness 
Uh, an ADA compliant swing is $58, $85. They just have to take it off the hook and put one up. Um, yep. So yes, I file for that on school districts all over, even if um, there's no child there. Um, Maple Lynn, we're working on that right now. We don't need to worry about that, Karen. Kimmy from the block said, do you have something to recommend to create detailed IEPs? She's a parent. Yes. Training. Your IEP is about 30 pages long. You have to be trained on how to write the entire thing yourself, whether you're the parent, the diagnostician, the principal. When you're done with our training, you could write the entire IEP document. So that's what the training is for. Not to how to go in there and let them have it. You go in there and you lead with love and the law. And if that doesn't work, you know, there's always syrup on top of an ant pile. Why do schools push for a 504 over an IEP? It's free. Money, money, money. It's free. And there's no teaching. There's no goals. There's no measuring. Oh, and by the way, they can have a 504 meeting with your eight-year-old without you. Would you like that? Uh, it's a no for me. Uh, Bly the Wild. Yes, the says, Academy teaches you how to get clients and get rid of your current husband. Oh, wait, that wasn't part of it. Yes, the Academy teaches you how to get clients. Okay. Um, back to the question. I'm sorry. As <laughs> Lead with love, the law. I am I'm leading. As a SPED teacher, how do I get the psych to do the FBA or a BIP? So what you ask is you ask for somebody who has formal training to be the lead on an FBA. So that should be an understanding whether you're in Missouri or Miami or Massachusetts, right? So um, I, I want somebody who's certified, either an LPC, a social worker, or an LSSP, to lead the team for a good FBA. Have I been a teacher or a school administrator? No, teachers and school administrators have graduated from college. So I would not be eligible to be either one of those. Um. Someone, a lot of people are asking how much your training is. So I've seen how much is the two-day training and how much is the mastermind, which they know. So the, the academy is $47 a month. The two-day training is $650, and there are payment plans for that. And the mastermind, uh, depending on which one you take, is either $2,495 or $3,495. That's 10 weeks long. It's 20 hours. Yes. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Um, at, oh, you already answered that one. Got me all out of order now, Karen. I, I pulled the question from the middle. Now I'm in trouble. You're in trouble. Uh, behavior seems to be a disability for many kids. When is it not considered a disability? When it's uh, willfulness and choice. Amen. Is there another training in the summer? So the academy is always, um, the the two-day is always going to be on demand. We, we don't have a guarantee. Um, just my schedule has gotten so busy. Um, we don't book as many as we used to, but we for sure have one booked in January and one booked in February. Christina's ready to jump in. I can see it. Go, Christina, okay. go. Go, go, go. So tidy home cleaning. I, I, I still need you here desperately, let me tell you. Um School told her, quote, between you and me off the record, your son should go to an autism school. Oh. End quote. That would be a great quote for the U.S. Department of Education Office of Civil Rights. They love quotes. Yeah. And somebody keeps asking, there's no certification to become an advocate. Even though people out there on the interweb are selling you that shenanigan, it's not a thing. So if you're a human and you want to serve families with disabilities, you can be an advocate. And we'd prefer that you're trained. We already have enough mess without people that have big mouths and are uneducated in meetings. And she's been for 30 years. I mean, I feel like she's ready to go. Let's go. Mm. Yeah. Yes, is it? Yes, let me just tell you advocates make somewhere, my advocates, I make them start at the bottom at $50 an hour. You were an advocate for fifty dollars an hour. That's six figures annually. That's probably what you guys make as teachers, right? Six figures. That's if you never worked more than forty hours. If you never went up on your prices, advocates make somewhere between 
$50 an hour or, or free. I don't do free because I can't take free to the grocery store um, to um, $400 an hour. So advocates make plenty of money. Can a school psychologist say no to doing a full evaluation even if everyone on the team is on board? No, they cannot. No. It's just a solid no. No. That's when you get out your no nerf. Explanation. That's when you get out the nerf gun. No explanation needed. Just mm -hmm. it's a no for us. Yeah. Okay, can someone ask uh how how do I do this? How do they become an advocate? So we would prefer that you were trained, but you could just go out there and start advocating like I did in the early 90s before you guys were born. And I fumbled my way through it. Um, unfortunately, fumbling your way through it could harm children. Is the academy meant to help you learn how to become an advocate? I have a doctor. It was fed. Whoa, my gosh. Yes. So you'll, you'll be the world's greatest advocate and you can go back to wherever you are. And here's the deal. As advocates now... We all get to advocate nationwide, right? Because we're I've been sitting here since March 13th, 2020. Um, several outfit changes. And I've never left. I do due processes from here. I do divorces. If you'd like to get divorced, I can help you with that. Or married. I can do it all. Um, everything is done. It's a great business model, the Zoom, right? Because I can screen share. I can actually know the names of people at the table. It's a much better business model. So, um um, you can advocate nationwide because when you have a family that you get in Dallas, they're going to tell their sister-in-law who's in Minnesota. And every, schools will never stop doing it via Zoom or uh, Teams. So it's exciting. Can a school say they will not make up IEP minutes? My child has missed 75 minutes a day for 10 days. Why has your child missed those days? Was your child absent or the service wasn't provided? I'm assuming they didn't provide the service. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And yes, they are. So somebody said, am I hiring for positions? I'm here to train advocates. So you go work for you. We will teach you exactly how to get to work very quickly. You should be full-time, full, full-time in 90 days. There's, it, it would be hard to mess it up. So it looks like the minutes were missed because the teachers keep calling in. No, you owe us the minutes, period. Whether you're abducted by aliens, um, you won state football tournament, um, the school sank into the ocean, you owe us the minutes. No, IEPs are not the same format from state. That makes us use our thinking caps at night. Like, what is this? Like, somebody just sent me her opening documents, and it was all odd page. Meaning, I'm missing the even ones. You sign up for the Academy um, at the link above. Just go to specialeducationacademy.com. Can you give them my uh, email address if they're having any issues getting signed up for something so I can help them? Yes, yeah, so Alicia um, will take care of everything, anything. She'll make gumbo for you, whatever you need. Uh, red beans and rice. So her email is advocate at specialeducationacademy.com. She'll help you if you have any, like, um, technical issues. She's young. Me, I've got an 8-track tape player. Oh, the dyslexia too. Share's coming, share's coming, share's coming. Yay. Do you That's divorce in Texas? Yes, I have been divorced in Texas. I'm a, I'm a, sort of, I'm a uh, mediator for the family court. So yeah, you want to get divorced and IEP, I'll take care of all of it. Does a due process hearing decision last for a school year or an IEP period? It depends what the hearing officer's decision was, right? So I've had federal settlements from the OCR that lasted six years. So depending on what the hearing officer grants based on the petitioner's um, petition to the court, that's a fancy way of saying what is what is the question before the court and what would it take to fix that? Sorry, I was replying back that I don't make a good gumbo. Anyways. <laughs> Can you explain what an advocate is and does? An advocate speaks up for somebody that can't speak for themselves. That's the actual definition. So I'm speaking up for that little boy 
that needs a robust IEP, but he's eight years old, and I'm the one that's going to make sure that it's written correctly, that it's populated correctly, and that all parties know their um, duties, responsibilities as it relates to state and federal law. Travis has a good question. He said, how do you determine how many minutes a student needs? Like they come to me from a different school with different amount of minutes. So you, you determine all of it based on their unique circumstances. So Andrew F., the, the guiding law of the land, March 22nd, 2017, from eight U.S. Supreme Court justices, says that we are charged with writing an IEP that enables a student with a disability to make, um, to enable them to make progress in light of their unique circumstances. So we have to know what their unique circumstances are and how does that look like across content areas. Now people are, are asking you, how do they contact you so you can divorce them? <laughs> I was teasing about the divorcing. <laughs> if you happen to live in Harris County, and I'm not doing anything one day, I can take you to mediation. But most people are not sane enough to settle in mediation. And then you'll have like my license plate number. And usually somebody that leaves mediation is in a bad mood. Um, someone said she has an appointment with the OCR on Wednesday. Do you have any advice? Oh, yes. Here's my advice. Only answer what they ask you. Do not tell them a story. Do not tell them a story. Because they're federal investigators, they're federal attorneys, they're also looking to see if this is not a case that they have jurisdiction over. And if you start talking about components of it, that they don't have jurisdiction over, which are most components of the IP, they're going to kick it back, right? So it took a lot of training for me. I trained under, I have mentors and leaders, and I probably spent $10,000 a year on my own professional development. Um, but there's a very specific way that you speak to the OCR and the language that you use. Okay, how many more questions do you want to take? 7.1. Okay. How do you provide faith when a child cannot stay awake in school? So faith has to do with implementing the documentation with fidelity. A child's needs have not been properly addressed if they're asleep in school. We got to figure out what's the root instead of talking about the fruit. Um, someone wants to know, do you suggest the child be involved in a meeting? No. Is there a monthly option for the academy? Yes, it's monthly. It's $47. No, I don't recommend children are going to be in the meeting. And, and No, 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 no. And here's the deal. You may not like me or love me, but I don't move my position. Why am I going to have a child in a meeting with adults? I mean, look, you're going to make a hard sell for me, right? Because it, it never goes well. I either, either have a child who's beautiful who is sending there reading some piece of paper that Miss Cindy helped him write, right? Come on now. I always say an IEP meeting is rarely a place for adults and it's never a place for children. Um, if people knew their duties and responsibilities at the IEP table, then I'd be happy with kids coming all day long. But no, if they're 18, um, if they're 18, it's over. Or if they're 18 and they're in a meeting, then we're doing um, work-based learning. So the child can be fully prepped and meet with their transition specialist before the meeting. Why does a kid have to come out of class to a meeting where everybody's just looking at them? What are you planning on doing after high school? Something other than this. I don't, I've never, and I only, I only do 500 meetings a year. So you're not going to convince me that a child with a disability coming into a meeting has some great profound impact. Never seen it. And somebody said they can learn about advocating for themselves. I want the staff members to learn how to advocate for them first. And once I see the staff members learning how to advocate for kids with special needs, then let's bring them in all day long. But we teach advocacy. We put all of this responsibility on children, but we don't teach children. So there's that. Yeah. If you need an advocate to come to your meeting, your child doesn't need to be there. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Um, now, let me just say this. I always meet with my kiddos and go, listen, tell me what you want. You want more recess? You want three lunches? You want a pumpkin? What do you want? I meet with my children. That's my client. I'm there to be their voice. But having a kid come into a meeting with a bunch of adults, please. Those adults barely know how to behave together. 
Um, Lyle's mom wants to know, do you file state complaints for your clients and go through the mediation process? Yes. From coast to coast. Can three minutes a week for 15... Wait. She oh real talk sped said this is a sped fiesta. I love that. <laughs> you need to come in January. We need you here. We we want you to come here. You have the best content. Yes, yes come on, come on. Um, Lyle's mom said. Oh wait, no, I already read that. One. Mama, Mama Teen Four. Nope. Can three times a week for fifteen minutes actually make progress when the students? Are so far behind. 15 minutes of what? What are you doing for 15 minutes? You're tying your shoes? You're brushing your teeth? Are we applying um, Axe body spray all over ourselves? Um, it depends on what you're doing. And there are some kids that they're just doing articulation. 15 minutes is plenty. It just depends on what the need is. Um, what do you do with we're understaffed? I always say, please don't, please do not talk about staffing in front of me. That's so inappropriate. It makes me feel very uncomfortable. All right, someone asked if you needed a bachelor's degree to be an advocate. You just need to have some sense. The requirement to be an advocate is you need to have some sense. And not all of y'all got sense. I understand. The girls behind me, none of them had sense. We, we fixed that. They were all really nice when I met them. We got rid of all that. Oh, somebody said this lady has no credentials. That is so exciting. Thank you so much. That actually, they, they that's must not, not know about the SAMS card. That you, actually, I do have credentials. I have a SAMS card. And I can buy toilet paper at 7 a.m. So there's that. Hello. Mm hmm. Someone asked, what state is the IEP legal until 18? So the IEP is legal in every state till 18. And if they have additional needs, they can go to school up to being 22. All right. Someone's asking about um, the what, what date and where is the next two day? intensive so saturday the 14th sunday the 15th of january the same weekend of martin luther king jr holiday and then um we have in february is it the 18th and 19th am i messing that up ladies 18th and 19th of okay. february to so the president's day weekend um saturday and sunday um all right we're gonna take two more okay real oh be real be you for life ask as a SPED teacher, I have been told not to be an advocate for the parents. What are my parameters? Um, by the way, I live right next to Dickinson ISD. So your parameters are we're all advocates. We're all, that's so ridiculous. We're all advocates for the student. Who else would we be advocating for? And if I, I couldn't work for somebody that told me to do that, I'd be like, I'm out and I'd figure out an exit plan. That's exactly what I did. Yeah. Peace out, comb yeah. fry. That's what I'd say. Mm -hmm. Um, so wants to know if the intensive are in person, they are in person and you will have friends for life and we're going to get girl gang jackets. So there's a couple of guys, they just wear like, like little bolero jackets, but I think we're going to get like letter jackets that say, say something. Yeah, that be good? And then like on the inside, it has like our little, like a sheriff badge. That, that'll be our credentials right there. Damn. Actually, I don't want to. I don't want to brag, but I also, Alicia, I don't know if you know this. I additionally now am a recipient of a Costco card. Both. Now you can have both. 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 Now you have a. Now you have dual. <laughs> I can get food samples from two places. I'll uh, um, <laughs> I lost the question. Oh, no. Be Real responded and said she's been told to protect the school district. Of course. Who would protect children? That's I didn't know the school district would, needed protection. I had a lady. Um, I'm, we're hammering them with a federal complaint right now. I won't tell you what state, Michigan. And the superintendent, after I came in, showed up at the parent-teacher conference. And the mom's like, what are you doing here? She goes, I have to protect the district from Karen. Like, like I don't even know where Michigan is. Is that, like, north of Dallas? Like... Calm down. You're just intimidating. You're just manipulating people. If you were doing your job, you wouldn't have to manipulate anybody. Okay. I think Roxy's got a good question. Okay. You're Roxy? No, not my Roxy. 
Lord, no. Jesus, Lord Jesus, there's a fire. <laughs> As a school OT with my full-time job, which training should I sign up for? I definitely need it quick. You need to, if you can just go into your child's bank when they're asleep tonight, they don't need all that Christmas money. They're children. They don't even have all their teeth. Get to the two-day training. My training is guaranteed. If you get to the end of the training and you don't want it, I will give you every dime back. No problems. You you will learn more by noon. The first, like your head will hurt because we're just going to yes. give it to you like a fire hydrant. Her actual name is Meredith. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, she's cute. Yeah, I agree. If as as a teacher, if you need it fast, come to the two day. Come on down. Yes. Um, and then last one. Who's it gonna be? Yes, I can right. I can file an OCR complaint for a group of students. I do that all the time. Yes. Uh, let's see. Let's be this one. My autistic son is made to leave at 1230 every day because he, and quote unquote, he's too much. I need help. I specialize. Okay. Actually, I invented too much so I can help. Um, yes, we will have trainings in the summer. Um, I don't know how many we will have. And yes, the training is for sped teachers and paras angelique was in the front row last time she's the world's greatest para we had diagnosticians we had behavior specialists we had special ed teachers we had general ed teachers it's for all of you guys that want to be even more gangster than you already are yes okay um i guess let's finish with how can they get in contact with you and all the different trainings because that's what everybody keeps asking for yeah so admin at specialeducationacademy.com. So if you're a pro <laughs> advocate, you are basically hired or contracted out to sit in. Mm. If you're a professional advocate. I don't understand. Yeah, people hire yeah. me to represent them. The yes. Yeah. The answer is yes. If you're a professional yeah. advocate, a parent would, would hire you or contract you out to come sit into their IP meetings. Yeah, to handle it. This is what one of my merchandise says. You be adorable, and I'll be clear. There are two different things. I don't need parents to say anything in the meeting. I will handle their kid's case um, like a pro. Okay. And then the trainings? The trainings are um, in person January 15th and 14th and 15th for the two-day, and February 18th and 19th for the two-day. You can always take the two-day digital on demand right now. Um, join the Academy. We have hundreds of people every Tuesday night. It's so much fun. We resource each other it's from coast to coast it's amazing and we want you to be equipped you don't need to be me one of me is plenty we want you to be equipped so that you can go serve your kiddos wherever you are and have kids make have successful student outcomes somebody said when should a lawyer step in um when you need legal representation when you're ready to file a due process in your state and you need an attorney to do that um if you think that there's been something criminal that's happened to your child, I certainly refer uh, lawyers, but at the very, 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 very end. Because at that point, then you just have lawyers talking to lawyers. And lawyers sometimes are in a bad mood. Would you agree, Christina? Occasionally, they are in a bad mood. They seem to be a little This irritated. is a Bonnie question. <laughs> yes. Bonnie, did you see that comment? I did, and I said no. <laughs> What did it say? For Bonnie. It said, can you be employed in the district and still advocate for parents within the same district? Thank you. That's a no. Thank you, Amanda. Yeah. I always say, for me, I'm allowed to do a lot of things. I've done this for a long time. If I can't get it done for you, probably an attorney can't get it done for you. I do partner with an amazing law firm. Oh, she doesn't like lawyers because it cuts into her profits. Did y'all know that? My mm. profits were cut into. I think into. You, lawyers are way more than you are. <laughs> you don't cost as much as a lawyer. Sorry. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. So lawyers are great, but then, then you're in a legal process and all talking at the IEP table is completely over. Everybody tell Chris bye. Bye, Chris. Bye. Bye. Okay. And we'll yeah. be on tomorrow night. Um, um you're so funny. We'll be on tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. And um, for more Ask the Advocate, we love you guys. If you need something, um, let me know. Remember, we get it right for the kids. We get it right for everybody.